Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dian Chronic, your host here on this Destiny 2 video, and today we're going to be going over my favorite PvP specials in Destiny 2. So in essence, I'll be talking about what performs the best, in my opinion, and of course, the reasons why. And if you did, in fact, see last season's The Beyond Light 1 or Season The Hunt, it is pretty much exactly the same. However, if you want a refresher, understanding why, or you didn't see that, it's going to be a great video to help you understand the meta. And of course, thank you to my buddies Zoomzy and Diz for helping me get the gameplay on screen, as well as helping me with the spreadsheet. Link to their Twitch in the description down below. And of course, throughout the video, you'll be seeing pictures of a spreadsheet that I created for you guys, fully public over on my Discord server, link in the description down below, on the channel, hashtag SpreadsheetStocks. And of course, as always, I want to thank my Patreons, because without their help, this video specifically would not be possible. The spreadsheets take 10 to 20 hours every single week, and they are helping make it possible. So thank you. And if you wanted to see them continue, link in the description down below. Moving on, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the spreadsheet. If you've never seen my spreadsheets before, this is what they look like. Dark theme, color-coded pictures, information, recommendations, catalyst information, masterwork recommendation, notes, legends, all sorts of stuff for all the weapons I considered for this video of all different types, as well as my top 10 and sub-rankings with each one of them as well. And throughout this video, instead of just going over the top 10, hanging them on a carrot on a stick, we're going to be talking about the different categories of weapons and which ones are performing the best within each category and the reasons why. And truly, if you don't care about why, then yeah, just, just use Fell Winters and Astrals, who cares? But if you start to understand why, anything new, you'll understand it a lot better quicker. For the most part, there's not really that many new things. Obviously, we had some weapons that were reissued, some weapons that are completely new to this season. Uh, that were added, but we obviously have no new special exotics, and that's usually what changes things up. For the most part, some new things just slotted in with old things, and there hasn't been really much change at all. Moving on, let's go ahead and go from category to category, talking about the best of each weapon. Starting up with the stragglers, we have Ariana's Vow, the only hand cannon, and Arbalist, the only linear fusion rifle. For Ariana's Vow, I actually really like this weapon. Obviously, it's more of a PvE weapon, but even in PvP, you can do a wombo combo, shoot one shot at somebody with Ariana's, and quickly swap to a hand cannon, but you do leave yourself at a bit of a disadvantage not having an instant kill weapon like a shotgun or a sniper or even a fusion rifle. When it comes to Arbalist, it has higher aim assistance, a bit more close range, but there is that charge time factor. Whereas snipers, if you can get used to them, and you have a good sight, you can actually do a lot more with it. Up next, let's talk about the trace rifles. We have, wow, we have five different exotic trace rifles, no legendary versions, and they all act very similarly, kind of like a higher damage auto rifle, each one having their own special effect. From my experience, Wave Slitter is going to be the best option. It has the ability to do a little bit more damage and absolutely rip other people apart. Now, what a lot of people need to understand is that it's basically a higher damage auto rifle and actually has the same time to kill that Gnawing Hunger used to have back in Season of Arrivals. So if you ever find yourself getting no kills at all with your auto rifle and you like auto rifles, try this out. You may get one or two kills of life before your ammo runs out, but it's going to be a lot of fun. But obviously, the reason why it's not in the top 10, which, by the way, barely not in the top 10, is because, again, you lose out on the ability to be able to one-shot enemies, either with a sniper, fusion, or a shotgun. Which, if you're finding somebody with an actual shotgun, you may be outclassed. Up next at our first major category, we have the fusion rifles. We'll be taking a little bit more time in this section talking about the different archetypes of fusion rifles and of course talking about the ranked items. Firstly, if you did not know, we actually had a buff to fusion rifles this season, increasing the damage fall off start distance and increasing that amount based on the range. So the shorter range at 6% and the longest range at 16%. On top of reducing the camera movement from firing a fusion rifle, which I didn't think was that necessary, but the changes to the SMGs was pretty significant and I really did like it. So maybe this is something that's really nice. However, even though they did get a buff, they haven't really moved that much in the meta obviously they were a little close to being in the top 10 for specifically these high impact frames they're probably around 12 or 13 which honestly is where it feels like they should be fusion rifles are one of those weapons that is very easy to understand easy to use and it makes sense for anybody you don't have to be super aggressive and super clicky with the weapon so they should be in a point where the medium and high level players will not use them as much However, if you are a little bit lower skilled or you're in the lower ELO, you'll have a lot of fun with these weapons and it will still be very effective. When it comes to my favorite fusion rifles, I'm definitely for the high impact frames, the maximum impact and the maximum range. And obviously they have a slower fire rate. However, it does feel like a lot of the faster fire rate fusion rifles act a bit more like a shotgun with the shotgun shoot a lot faster. So the goal here is to try to max out your range as much as possible. As for the only fusion rifle ranked item, we have Bastion which in my opinion is not like a fusion rifle at all. Normal fusion rifles, they fire seven bolts and they travel upward with it. The Bastion shoots a spread of three slugs three times. 
And the key point here is that it usually takes around one and a half of those three spreads to be able to kill a Guardian. So you can kill a Guardian twice over with a single burst from this weapon. I.e. supers will die to this pretty consistently and enemies from a pretty decent range also consistently. On top of it already having a pretty middling charge time. And the last note I want to say is Jotun. It's one of those things that some people absolutely love, some people absolutely hate. It is an interesting option and I did include it in one of my recent Titan builds. If you don't know, Jotuns count as ability damage or ability kills for some reason and they spawn sunspot. Check out that video for my channel if you want more information. Up next we have the grenade launcher, a type of weapon that was very close to getting the top 10 last time, probably at number 11, and this time it replaced the wave splitter for a number of different reasons. Firstly, people are getting a lot more comfortable with these types of weapons that they're fitting a bit more into builds. Secondly, we got a really good option in the form of Salvager Salvo. Probably the most important option is that it's a very easy version to get. It has spike grenades, so it one shots to the body, and it has decent perks, although not the best possible. Definitely, if you can find a better True Teller or Orwing's Maul, you're going to have a better overall option. But Salvager Salvo is so easy to get because it is the ritual weapon this season and will be available as a quest for the entire year. And in case you're wondering, the main way you use grenade launchers in a wombo combo setup, you shoot somebody with the grenade launcher shot. If you don't kill them, you quickly swap over to your 120 hand cannon, for example, and finish them off. Or alternatively, if they're hiding behind cover, you can flush them out just by blowing up explosions right next to the cover. But again, you will be outclassed by shotguns and snipers in the highest level play. You might not be able to have a grenade launcher as an option, and they don't bounce as well as you would like them. Something about them being a can shape whenever they hit walls, it's a bit random. Definitely not a Halo 3 frag grenade, that's for sure. Up next, let's talk about these snipers. Now, these snipers are the ones that got the most additions to the top 10. We have a new 72, the only energy 72 outside of Borealis. We got the Far Future as a great addition, slotting at the A sub rank on number 2. And we also have the Apostate, a weapon that probably many of you forgot about, also slotting it at the A position at number 9. So, these snipers definitely got a lot of really good options. Now, when it comes to the different archetypes, of which there are three main archetypes of snipers, Firstly, I find that the 140s fire a little bit too fast and they do not two-shot body shot on top of generally not having nearly as much aim assistance as they've had in the past. Something like Alone as a God had like 90 plus aim assistance. The newer ones have in the 70 to 80 range, which is very close to that of the 90s. The 90 RPMs, that is. The 72 aggressive frame sniper rifles generally have longer range scopes. They're a little bit more difficult to handle and generally have less aim assistance, but more range. So that is a weird combination and sometimes you lose the target. Their main advantage is that they can one shot headshot enemy supers. They have a ability to one shot body shot with a big major damage bonus. And again, we have the new option this season of the frozen orbit, which has incredible perks, a great availability, but obviously a massive pool and obviously our only energy 72 in the game. And and finally, we have the 90 RPMs, a good balance between fire rate, aim assistance, different stats across the board, and we also have a lot of great availability, including Adored being an option that literally anybody can get from the Ritual Quest that's fairly easy to do, Far Future slotting in, pretty available this season, you can get so many of them so easily, and there's a lot of really great rolls on them, and obviously we have a Kinect version in Eye of Soul and Long Shadow as well, which is, I think Long Shadow now is a Crucible drop, or maybe a World drop, so again, lots of options, great perk options, great availability, just incredible sets of weapons overall. And the last thing I'll say about these is that many people may be surprised to see Borealis in the top 10, or even just ranked with other legendary weapons, considering it cannot have Snapshot or Quick Draw, which is very important to a a lot of special weapons. However, it does have exotic tier stats. Something that you really do need to look out for is that exotics often have way better stats than their legendary counterpart. So it may end up being a better option depending on what you like. But obviously you need to have targeting and dexterity to use Borealis to be able to compensate for not having those perks. And finally, the number one class of weapon in the game, we have the shotguns, which should not come as a surprise to anybody considering we have something like the Felwinter's Lie, considering how many nerfs came to snipers, and obviously considering the prevalence of shotguns and their ease of use. Now, something that's very important to highlight is that the snipers were the main competition for the shotguns, not in a direct comparison, but for the particular type of weapon you could use. Not only did we get that flinch nerf this season for snipers, again, we got that aim assistance for a magnification nerf last season. And if you look at the patch notes for this season, you type in Control F shotgun, 
Not a, not a single entry. Now, that's not to say I think that shotguns generally need to be nerfed. There's definitely a bit of an ease of use thing where many people are using it just because it's easy. I think that certain shotguns do need to be changed. Something like Felwinter's Lie, if we removed Quick Draw from it, would be a lot more competitive with everything else. Because Felwinter is just not fair. We'll talk more about that when we get to it. When it comes to the archetypes of shotguns, first up we have the rapid fire frames, which are probably going to be a bit more comfortable to less skilled players or newer players to the environment, because if you end up missing part of your first shot or your first shot in general, you can fire that second shot very, very quickly. And more often than not, you're going to be getting two shot kills from the shotgun. However, obviously outclassed by the range and potential of the other shotguns. After that, we have the precision buckshot frames, which we did actually get a new one this season, a reissue of Retold Tale with some pretty good perks on it. However, it has the same problems that it had before. First of all, we don't really have that many options. We literally don't have a kinetic option. And generally, the one-shot range is less than that of the aggressive frames, where the aggressive frames technically have more damage per pellet, and the precision frames having more range. That range doesn't really matter if you don't one-shot at it. After that, we have the precision slug shotguns. Now, these slug shotguns are known for their high skill floor, high skill ceiling kind of weapon because they have the ability to have a much farther range than the highest range buckshot shotgun. And because we've been getting so many great options this season with Blasphemer having quick draw opening shot, the best possible perks you can have on a shotgun. Oh look, Fell Enters has the same set of perks. And we had two last season in the form of Heritage and Bone Chiller, and we had first and last out the season before that. So in essence, more people have been using these types of shotguns for a longer period of time that more people are trending towards that higher skill ceiling. And because they're getting used to it, they become a bit more prevalent and a bit more scary. I don't know how else to say that, it, it just feels right. A little offshoot from there, we have Duality and Chaperone. Now I kind of consider the Chaperone and Duality to be like kinetic and energy alternatives of each other and definitely the best slug shotguns in the game. Now when it comes to the comparison between the two, I still think the Chaperone to be the objectively better option. First of all, you have to understand that Duality did actually get a buff this season of 1.25 meters, both in hip fire and aim down sights, and they compressed the maximum stacks from 7 to 5 with keeping the maximum damage at the 5, which are both really good buffs for this weapon. Definitely a lot closer to the range of the Chaperone, although I believe the Chaperone has still slightly more range. On top of also having 5 more RPM at 70 instead of 65. Keeping in mind that Duality also technically has a little bit more impact than the other slug shotguns. I don't know why, that's just the thing. On top of that, Chaperone's damage perk is a lot better as well. On Black Wings, you get a pellet final blow, which is, you know, maybe a little bit less common than the slug shot. You get around an 18% damage bonus, which will really only increase your range by a small amount. The Chaperone, however, has a perk called Road Burn, where precision kills grant a bonus to handling, range, and precision damage. I think it's like 100% more precision damage, which effectively increases its range on top of already increasing its range by a significant margin for that one-shot range on top of being able to one-shot any super in the game. The Duality probably can't do that. So in my opinion, just a better perk. The main advantages that Duality has is that it's an energy version and that it can have that buckshot spread pellet if you need that in close range but definitely a lot more competitive this season. After that, at number five, we have the lightweight shotguns. Before Beyond Light, I didn't really use them that much until I got one with a full choke on it, and it really did change how it's being used. Full choke is obviously the best perk you can have for barrel on pretty much any shotgun, but it really does make a big difference with the lightweight frame, bringing them a lot closer to the aggressive's range, obviously not more than that, while also having a higher fire rate, making them a bit more competitive against the aggressive frames if you end up both missing your first shot. On top of also having having a lot of great options. Retro Futurist this season coming from Crucible with a great set of perks, Xenoclass being a world drop anywhere since Beyond Light, and the CQC-12, and if you play during Arrivals, you know you could get those things to drop like hotcakes because Umbral Engrams were way too common. The only downside is that there's literally no kinetic option, so we get a kinetic option, we'll probably see some nice little slotting into number five here. And finally, at number one, we have the aggressive frame shotguns. I've alluded to them multiple times throughout this section. They have a really good one-shot range potential, that's really consistent and really available. If you play during a season of the Worthy, or if you somehow can get Felwinter's Lie, it is the most ridiculous overpowered shotgun in the game. If you didn't know, the best possible perks in order that you can get on a shotgun is Full Choke, Accurize, Quick Drop, Opening Shot, Range Masterwork, 
And to top it all off, it also has an exotic tier frame. I'm not kidding. It's, it's not my opinion here. If you highlight it, it's literally yellow. It's exotic tier shot package, giving you a more uniform shot package on top of being aggressive frame. It, it, it's just cheating. And of course, the Astro Horizon being your kinetic version, not nearly as ridiculous overpowered as the Fell Winter's Lie. And on top of that, since Beyond Light, they did technically change the random roll perks you can have on this weapon, and it no longer has the chance of having quick drop, which is pretty much the quintessential de facto best pvp special perk you can have surplus is a pretty good alternative but it's you know it's not it's not fell winter something that i haven't mentioned yet is that energy specials are generally preferred considering how many kinetic uh, primaries are doing so well in the meta right now but obviously this season we got things like bottom dollar igneous uh, the palindrome so we're definitely getting a lot more uh, energy options for primaries but generally you trend towards energy specials. And of course, as always, please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions or concerns about my top 10 about this video. If you had something that you think I should know about certain weapons that may change my rankings for next time, please let me know. And of course, let me know why so I can make it the best spreadsheet possible. And of course, as always, thank you to my patrons. Truly and sincerely, you are making this possible. If it weren't for you, I would have to have gotten a part-time job or maybe even a full-time job and had to have stopped doing YouTube. Because honestly, frankly, I wasn't making it. More so these days, especially with Patreon. So I just want to say thank you. It really means a lot to me. Specifically, I want to give a big thank you to Medi Boudou, Mom, Dad, Charles Williams, Joe Smith, Monday, Natalie Hoppins, Steve Boxmas, Justin Herrera, Raymond Showman, Unit Panther, Cole Sherm, Casey Reagan. Close enough for your support on Patreon. And I hope you guys have a good day.